I had an introduction, two main body paragraphs and a conclusion. You are gonna do freaking awesome. I believe in you. Hey, you guys liked my video for writing task one where I got 10 out of 10. So I'm gonna show you how I got 10 out of 10 in task two. So basically the task two of your GAT is a persuasive task. How do I know that? Because it says it's presenting your point of view for one or more statements. Your piece of writing will be judged on the quality of what you say about the issue regardless of the point of view you express. That's important because it just gives you confidence that you can say what you want as long as you back it up and how effectively you express yourself, as with anything English. So essentially what it means by one or more statements is you can use one or more of these boxes as argument foundations in your essay. You can use one only, you can use two, three, use three, or if you're like me and you're lazy and you can't think of your own ideas, you use all four in your essay. So let me show you how I did that. So I got 10 out of 10 out of this section, which we did for the 2004 general achievement test. And if you watch my other video, you know that this is not the actual gap that I did. It was actually just the practice gap that our school made us do based on the 2004 gap. Now the gap has not changed over the past 15 or so years. So just because this is an old gap, it doesn't mean that it's not relevant for what you're doing because the instructions are exactly the same and their expectations are therefore the same as well. So in this particular one, I had these four statements, which I'll just leave on screen really quick for you to have a read, and then I'll show you my essay afterwards. So I approached this particular persuasive more like a essay, but a persuasive essay. So I had an introduction, I had two main body paragraphs and a conclusion. And it was only like a page, not even a page and a half long. And yet I still got 10 out of 10, which just goes to show that if you put in that little bit of effort, you are gonna do freaking awesome. I believe in you. So what I did was I had a look at all four of these statements and built my own contention as a result. So my introduction is as follows. We live in a society that allows freedom of speech. That is the freedom to openly express our thoughts and feelings. However, we should be grateful for this democratic right and we also need to respect and at times preserve this freedom that is our own. Super short introduction. I really didn't have much to say, but I wanted to just get out what I had and not try to force any more because I think when you try to force out more things and you don't really have much to say, it really is quite obvious and it just takes up the examiner's time and it makes your piece overall less valuable. So just say what you need to say. And this is how my first paragraph unfolded. With the ability to allow others to acknowledge our thoughts and feelings, we're not only free to speak, but we're also free to reach out to others and share our ideas and emotions. So if I look at the statements, I think that my first paragraph is probably based on this statement here. Yeah, it is, because I then go on to say, firstly, without this basic right that so many of us take for granted, our society would not have come as far in its growing understanding of gender equality, LGBTQ, or even our basic day-to-day -day opposing ideas from others. So here you can see that I'm starting to use real life examples as well, which you can absolutely do. This is your point of view, remember? So you wanna use your personal experiences, leverage that in your writing, because that's how you're gonna stand out from everybody else who's, <laughs> there are like thousands of people looking at these four statements and writing about the same kind of stuff. So the way that you can stand out very easily is start to include your own examples. For example, objecting to certain kinds of entertainment that one may not like or listen to or watch whilst other may want to watch such entertainment. That was not my best sentence, but hey, still man, 10 out of 10. Secondly, without the freedom of expression, we would have a mere totalitarian society, a world filled with dullness. If we didn't have this freedom, where would we be? Perhaps our prime minister would decide to attack the USA on the basis of this opinion, and we citizens could not object. Where would we be now? Hence, it's clear that freedom of speech is important in our daily lives. We do have a right to have a say on whatever we like. 
However, we must not breach this right for this could result in community standards declining. Yeah, like I'm reading this paragraph now, especially having chewed it for 10 years, and I'm like, man, if this was to go in a normal SAC essay, it probably wouldn't do that well. But I think examiners sort of give you a little bit more leeway because they know that you're under pressure and this is completely cold material that you're saying. What I thought was really clever of me at the time actually, was that I was learning the book 1984 as one of my text response books. And so in that book, we talked a lot about dystopian worlds, totalitarian societies and the impact that has on its people. And so I leveraged a lot of the information I learned from that book in my actual writing itself. So yeah, like use the knowledge that you know, cause you do know stuff. So you can see in this first paragraph, I've already covered this particular statement. I've also pretty much covered this one as well. And I've sort of touched a little bit here. Maybe I'll come across this a little bit later. So in terms of where you put the statements in your essay, it doesn't matter. Just put them in a way that you think flows best because I mean, it's still an essay at the end of the day having coherence, having flow throughout your essay is still important. Moving on to the next paragraph. There are some people who use their power of speech to offend, hurt and to be cruel to others. Okay, that's definitely heading towards this direction now. Take for example, the cricket. In a match with Australia against India, one of the Indian cricketers reported that an Australian cricketer verbally abused him by calling him a monkey. Ah, so this was something that had happened in my year. This was something that was happening in the media and I wanted to take current affairs and use them in my essays to kind of show that I was worldly. This resulted in much backlash from Australians, a lot of anger and people were offended. Bringing this situation to our daily lives, have you been verbally abused due to your culture, your sex, your beliefs, your values? We all know that these things occur every single day, whether it's cricketers, you, your family or friends, governments, bosses, etc. This behavior is unnecessary and although those who do abuse their right to speak may argue that they're just being honest, this is being crude and coarse. There is the explicit quote from the statement. There are other ways to speak to people if you have an objection, by speaking to them politely and respectfully. And then you see like I just moved on into my conclusion afterwards. It's clear that being able to have the right to our freedom of speech is invaluable. However, one must know when their use of speech is breaching or abusing this right. They must respect and value their freedom of speech. That's it. I hope that shows you that the so GATT is a lot more straightforward than you might think. I've got more detailed videos on how you can approach the GATT overall, not just your essays, but also your multiple choice question time. So make sure you go ahead and watch that. I wish you guys all the very best for your SAC coming up and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.